Okay, welcome back. Week three. So uh, we're going to finish off chapter four here. I am going to turn off the video feed of my face. Hopefully uh, that's okay, unless you already got bored of me anyway. Um, I'll turn on the video at the end again just to uh, say goodbye and to uh, give you a forward to the following uh, week's material. So that's about it. Let's get going on some questions and concepts. And here we go. So the first concept we're going to talk about is the three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem. Yes, the Pythagorean theorem can go beyond two dimensions. And then we're going to do some tougher questions with algebra. So look forward to that at the end. When we move on to chapter five and six, eventually I'll cover even more questions that are more challenging and involve some uh, algebraic manipulation. So here we go. Let's talk about this three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem. So the three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem, or I'll just say 3D for short, is given by the following equation. Notice that you have here a squared plus b squared equals, well, there's something else here. You see that? So it's just the third dimension that's going to give us the d squared here. Now, I haven't drawn a picture, and I will show you a visualization shortly. The way that I like to write the 3D Pythagorean theorem is by square rooting both sides. So if you square root the left side here and you square root the right side here, then this will cancel with that because they're inverses. And you end up with the following equation. So what does this mean physically or geometrically? I'll do that uh, explanation now through a nice uh, 3D diagram. So. If you go to the book though, you can look at pages 22 and 23 for a proof. But here's my derivation, something that I like to do on the board. So hopefully you enjoy it and it makes sense. I want you to start by thinking about a box. Now hopefully this box is looking reasonably uh, nice to you. So there's the box. Let's say the dimensions of the box are A and B and C. It doesn't matter which is the length, the width, or the height, respectively. All that matters is that there's three dimensions given for this box. I want you to imagine now, if I were to figure out the longest distance, straight line distance, in this box, where would that be? Would it be along the top edge like that? Or would it be along one of the sides like that? Well, it actually will be the inner diagonal. So imagine starting up here and going down here. That is the length of the diagonal of this box or the diagonal of a rectangular prism. The analogy is in 2D with a square. If you have A and B, the diagonal would be, well you can call it D but I'll call it C. I'll move the B over here. And what you have here is the Pythagorean theorem, see? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, we're going to derive an analogy in the three-dimensional case here by finding the length of the diagonal d. But we're going to use information like this to get to that goal. So what I'm going to do is just play a little bit of a wizardry. I'm just going to make that small because you know that already from last couple of weeks. So let's just get that out of the way. And here we go. Somehow, I'm going to use the two-dimensional Pythagorean theorem to help create the three-dimensional case formula. Well, there's different ways of doing it, but I'll just show you one approach that works very easily. I want you to imagine two right angle triangles. I gotta draw them really nicely here, otherwise it's gonna come out like not looking too good. There you go. At the base of this box, we have a right angle triangle. You can see it in perspective there. And we also have a right angle triangle pointing upward like that. So these triangles, which are tangent to each other, are in three dimensions, and that's looking all right. Let's draw these two triangles in orange. I can call them, if you want, one and two. Let's draw them flat. So imagine that you flatten them out. We talked about what this type, uh, what type of uh, geometric uh, technique this is. We call this a net or a flattened image. So this net has dimensions a, 
B. And then this height here, which I'll just double tick like that, is C. I can put a C over there. And that's what that is right here. So there's your third dimension. Ultimately, we're trying to find the length D right here, the diagonal in terms of A, B, and C. You can uh, create a temporary variable, just something intermediate here called X. And let's see if we can get that uh, formula that we saw in the previous couple slides in a couple of steps of algebra. So triangle number one, write down the Pythagorean theorem there. What do you get? Well, what's the longest side on triangle number one? It's X, because X is opposite the right angle. So we can uh, write down the Pythagorean theorem as A squared plus B squared is X squared. Now, let's go to triangle number two. What's the longest side on this triangle? Well, the right angle is pointing toward D, so D is the longest side. So what I'll do is I'll write X squared plus C squared equals D squared. The cool thing here is that you don't actually have to isolate x. You just need to get rid of x somehow by comparing the two equations. So what I see is that I have an x squared here and I have an x squared here. So I'm gonna substitute that x squared into that position. In other words, I'm gonna replace x squared. I'll just color that for you. I'll replace the x squared with a squared plus b squared. And yeah, that's about it. Once you plug in A and B, or A squared and B squared respectively, and the C squared is still there from earlier, you end up with the equation on the first slide, the three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem. So what does this uh, formula give you, and how can you use it to solve questions? The idea is that in construction and in other applications, such as architecture, for example, it's important to calculate straight line distances in three dimensions. So let's take a look at an example and make sense of that. Now th these examples come straight from the notes so you can open up your book and try them along with me or you can uh, take some time and just kinda follow along with the video. So here we have a block it's a rectangular prism and the dimensions are 2 by 3 by 4 inches respectively. We're asked to find the distance from the diagonally opposite corners A and B. So again, this is a box in 3D, so just give that a visualization there. So that length there, which I've exaggerated, that's D. That's the inner diagonal. So, pause the video if you like, but I'm going to go ahead and do the calculations on another slide. Here we go. So I've just gotten rid of the text, and I'm just going to redraw that perspective for you. So we want the distance from A to B and I've exaggerated the line there a little bit. It's off target. But anyway, that length there is D. It doesn't matter which dimension is length, width, or height here. All that matters is that you are given all three. So if we write down the Pythagorean theorem, that's A squared plus B squared plus C squared. And I prefer to have this version of the equation with the square root. If it makes you feel better, you can just label each of these as A, B, and C. So for example, maybe this is A, and this is B, and that's C. It really is up to you which one's which. Or you can just avoid the labeling altogether and just write down 2, 3, and 4 squared respectively. So I'll do that here. 2, 3, and 4. Let's take this one really slow. That's 4. 9 and 16 or root 29. Now uh, I'm going to go to the previous slide just to familiarize you with some things that I really like to see. I want the distance to the nearest thousandth of an inch. So what that means is three decimal places. So if we take our calculator and I'm not going to cheat, I'm actually going to do it. Root 29 is 5.385 and that represents the length 5.385 of the diagonal so there you go one down and uh, a few more to go hopefully uh, the pace is good for you 
It's this is probably going to be a shorter lesson than the other one we did last week. That was a marathon. So let's take a look at the next question. So you're still on page 24 of the notes, but now it's a little bit vague because you have no diagram. You're like, okay, well, find the distance across diagonally opposite corners of a cube. Yikes. Okay, so let's take a look here. We have the cube is 40 meter, centimeters on each side. So I'm just gonna draw that on the next page and we'll work it out. Two decimal place accuracy. So I'm gonna try to remember all this information as I flip over to the next page. So let's draw a box here, or a cube I should say. The cube is 40 by 40 by 40. And again, it doesn't matter which one's the length, the width, or the height. All that matters is that it is a rectangular prism. And we can use the Pythagorean theorem in three dimensions. So I'll write down the formula here. A squared plus B squared plus C squared. And if you evaluate that with the 40s, in this case, it doesn't matter which is which because they're all 40. So I'll just put down the 40s and square them and square root them. So 40 squared is pretty easy. Triple that and square root it. So we have here D is the square root of 4,800. Because I'd like to see the accuracy here, I'm just gonna see that we have two decimal place accuracy. So let's round that to two decimal places. I've evaluated the square root already and gotten 69.28 centimeters. That's that, there you go. So the question is, uh, could you create a formula maybe for any cube? Uh, yeah, you could. So perhaps we can do that just for some interest here. So what I'm doing now is gonna be a little bit extra. I'm gonna take advantage of my creative skills here and replace the 40s with L. So I'm gonna put L everywhere, L, L, L because it is a cube, they all have the same dimension along each length. I will leave this to you as an exercise. I want you to think about what the answer is for D in terms of L. The answer should be root three times L. The dot there, I like to separate it just so you don't think that the L is under the square root. So that's a little bit extra, a little happy face there, something different. As you saw in your first assignment, I love throwing questions in there where you create a formula and I do try to balance out the difficulty. So let's move on to another example. Oh, look at that. By what exact multiplying factor is the diagonal of a cube longer than each of its sides? Ooh, you know what's funny? I'm going to steal this. I'm going to steal this information from the previous question. Maybe I can just grab that with the happy face and put it over here because that's actually the answer to this question. I kind of tricked you. I kind of thought ahead on the next one. I thought maybe I could kill two birds with one stone. So the answer here is that the diagonal is root three times the length of the edge. Probably take me longer to write it here than to say it. Congratulations, that is the answer to this question. One thing I like to do is be very economical in terms of my explanation. So if the video is a little short, it doesn't mean that we're being lazy, we're being smart. So. Here we go with a practical question. So it says here that the inside of a trunk or a storage chest 
if, if imagine for example the uh, cab uh, of a vehicle and you wanted to put a or in this case a box you have the dimensions of a box and you want to put a thin steel rod in that box now will it fit in the box and the answer is yes or no that you're looking for and then it says how many centimeters to spare or how many centimeters too long is it so there's a lot of action going on in this question the main things I want to take away as I draw the diagram on the next page are 65, 55, and 90. So here we go. I'm just going to draw that box. So 90. Sixty-five and fifty-five. It doesn't matter again which is uh, which in terms of the dimensions. All that matters is that we have a rod that we want to put in that box. Now, this rod is 1.3 meters long. Let's make that centimeters because the other information is also in centimeters. So 65, 55, 90. There we go. And let's just put those units there. I hope you don't mind me flipping back and forth because it just helps me make sure I don't mess this up. So we have 130 centimeters. Now the question is, here's the rod. I'll just do this. It's 130 centimeters. Will that rod fit in the box? Well, how would you do that? How would you calculate that? I think, uh, I think you can see that you're going to have to fit the rod in diagonally to maximize its uh, amount of uh, fit in the box. In other words, you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't want to lay the rod flat in the box. That wouldn't make sense. You want to get the most bang for your buck, and that's going to be along the maximum diagonal in the box. So what we can do is calculate the diagonal of the box and then compare it to this 130 centimeters, which is exactly what I'm about to do. So I think that you can uh, just take a moment there and calculate the diagonal of the box which I'll call D using the three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem so that's 90 squared 65 squared and 55 squared and I want to make sure something about the accuracy I'm gonna dip back there we want accurate to 0.1 centimeters so I'll evaluate this to 0.1 centimeter accuracy so 90 squared plus 65 squared plus 55 squared square root is 123.9 123.9 centimeters so that's the maximum straight line distance in this box is this 130 centimeters greater than or less than this value well clearly it's too big doesn't fit in the box. So what we can say is that 130 is greater than 123.9. And what's the difference between the two? Well, that's 6.1. 6.1 centimeters too long. Let's make sure that we've addressed all the uh, question in its entirety there so you see the 123.9 is reported here in the answer key but you need to then consider the actual question is does it fit well no it doesn't fit and that's that here's the next question and it's the uh, last one of the batch of questions on the three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem so hopefully by covering these questions, I've built up uh, enough information to help you understand the concept. Now, if you can answer this question, you are in great shape. The cool thing about this question is that I can answer it, um, whether it's this way or in, in terms of in person, I can answer it without drawing a single thing. I don't, you can answer this question without getting your hands dirty drawing stuff on the page. Let's say that you're not the best artist and you're like, I don't really feel like drawing things in 3D and perspective. I'm going to ask you three simple questions 
and you're going to actually just destroy this question and you're going to have a big grin on your face because I'll give you one on the assignment very similar to it. So let's talk about the question. I'll just read it for us here. So we have two roof sections of a hotel. So you got the one roof section here and the other one here and they are converging along the line segment AB and that's called a valley rafter. So what we want to figure out is what is the distance between A and B when you're given a few things. The width of the roof on the one part of the L is uh, L shape I should say is 40 feet. The other part of the uh, L section is a 30 foot span for the roof and finally the roof all the way throughout is 10 feet high. So the question is how far is it from A to B? Bottom line, what is that? Now the key thing to this question is to ask yourself, is this question one dimensional, two dimensional or three dimensional? So think about that for a second. Do you think A to B, a to B distance, do you think that is uh, influenced by one, two or three dimensions? So the answer is three dimensions. In other words, A and B are a certain side to side distance apart, maybe this way. They're also a certain front to back distance if you look from above, and they're a certain up and down distance. So I'm gonna try to throw in a text box here because handwriting this is gonna take forever. So let me uh, just do some wizardry here with my uh, PowerPoint. So the first question I'm gonna ask you is, how far, this is fun typing, how far to the left of B is A? Second question, how far behind B is A? And how far above B is A? Now, I can't think and type at the same time and talk, so I'm gonna double check that, if you don't mind my silence. Okay, I'm feeling pretty confident that I phrased the questions correctly. If you can answer these three questions, uh, then the solution that is to follow is so easy. So here we go. Let's talk it out. How far to the left of B is A? Now when I think of left and right, the left and right is this way and that's related to the 40. Since A and B are along the uh, 40 foot uh, distance there, A is halfway actually. If you think about that, A is halfway to B. So that's 20 feet. So that's 20 feet right there. I'll just put the 20 feet and put it in the bank. I'm going to get rid of this drawing here. So if you need to go back, you can go back in the video and recover that diagram. Now we want how far behind B is A. So I'm going to draw a vertical there. And that length there, which I've really just squeezed in, is 15 feet. And if you extend that backwards, that's how far that's how far behind BA is. It's 15 feet. Let me just highlight that again. That's 15 feet. And finally, and I should say the easiest of all the cases, if you think from an elevation perspective, B is at the bottom edge of the roof and A is at the top of the roof. If the roof's 10 feet high, then, well, A is 10 feet above B. So those are three dimensions. You could actually imagine, and I've done this before in class, you could draw a box there. Now, I'm not going to draw the box because I'll do a very, very bad job of interfering with the diagram. But there's a 20, a 15, and a 10. And if you imagine a box that fits around A and B like that, then actually this unlocks the question. Perhaps if I take a risk here and I just try to manufacture that uh, on the diagram, you'll see it a bit better. I bet you I can. This should be entertaining. Okay, if I fail at this, I'm gonna let it go because I'm a bit stubborn at this kind of stuff. I'll just, I'll just give up at that point. But you can imagine there's a box there. Anyway, hopefully you're laughing and not getting too irritated. Anyway, the distance from A to B is the straight line distance in that box. And we can do that very simply by just doing the three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem. So that's 20 squared, 15 squared, and 10 squared. I'm going to just take a moment there and evaluate that on my calculator. 
just gonna go to the question make sure that we get the correct prescribed accuracy so we want it in feet and inches keep in mind on your second assignment I'm gonna hammer you uh, with uh, feet and inches calculations in your final answers so let's get this question going here so first things first 20 squared 15 squared and 10 squared square root is 26.92 feet now to go from feet to feet and inches think of it as two parts first of all you know that it's 26 feet that is a no-brainer and then what you want to do is take the fractional part here the 0.92 so let's just take the 0.92 and multiply by 12 and that's approximately 11 when you round it so I'll just say 0.92 times 12 inches so that's 11 inches approximately to refer back to the diagram and the solution here we have 26 feet 11 inches so I think we are good did you ever expect this question to be answered in such a very uh, non-visual way beyond just the original diagram yeah it's crazy but that's it three simple questions and you can answer stuff like that so the next time that you're in your blueprinting or reading an architectural diagram and you're like how the heck can I infer some three-dimensional information don't worry about drawing the thing ask yourself the questions and maybe it's just asking those questions and phrasing it that way is easier for you to process I really hope you enjoyed that because I take a lot of uh, care in terms of that one the alternative is very painful to deliver in front of a class of 30, especially uh, early in the morning. Okay, so uh, let's flip over and do some algebra. So I have one more question in the notes I'm going to cover, which is this guy over here. We're going to cover this question carefully, and then I've left a blank slide maybe to uh, just try another algebra question with you. Hopefully it's something of interest, and that's it. That'll be it for this week. So here we go. A point P is located here. There's P. And P is, uh, let's see, five meters away from the edge of a circle. And also, it says here that the length of the two equal tangents, so these are tangents. So those tangents are equal and are 13 meters away from the point P. So this point of tangency is 13 meters away from P. The question is find the necessary radius here R accurate to two decimal places. Actually this answer here of 14.40 I believe is an exact answer. It's not rounded uh, or any lost accuracy. So we could just say here give the answer exactly. So let's go through the process here and work it out. On the next slide, just take the figure, and I'm gonna ask you to really think about how this question connects to the Pythagorean theorem. So this is not a three-dimensional question, but it's still Pythagorean theorem. It turns out that a very specific geometric property of circles and tangents needs to be known to answer this question. And that is, if you draw the radius of the circle, so that's the radius, I'll call that R, the radius and the tangent always meet at 90 degrees. Let me just write the word tangent here so that you're clear about that. So this radius and that tangent meet at a 90 degree angle. And that is the foundation of our right angle triangle. And we can extend that over there to the point P. And that is the triangle. Look at that. So if I draw that triangle again, abstract from the image separately like that we have here R 13 but what the heck is this side so take a look back at the diagram okay from here to here that's 5 I'll just kinda shade it in a little bit too small for arrows but you can see that there's a 5 there so ask yourself what is this length here tell me what that length is is it a variable is it known well I think it's pretty clear that if this is a radius and this is a radius, this is a radius also. So I'll put the R there. 
So in terms of combining them into an expression, we get r plus 5. And look at that. That is a right angle triangle. We can use the Pythagorean theorem. And there is only one variable involved, meaning that we can get an answer. So the uh, questions in this course are well posed. What I mean is that you're not going to get a question where the answer is garbage and it doesn't make any sense. I'll make sure that I design all the questions to have positive lengths for dimensions and, and solutions. So let's write down the Pythagorean theorem, but avoid using the letters A, B, and C. Stick to the information on the diagram. Which of these lengths is the longest side? Well, the right angle is here, so R plus 5 is the longest side. So I'm going to write R plus 5 by itself, and then I'll write the other information on the other side including the uh, squareds. If we expand that, we can use uh, the distributive property. Remember that r plus 5 all squared is the same thing as writing r plus 5 twice. So there's r squared. And this 13 here, when you square it, is 169. So we can distribute this by using what you know as FOIL. If you remember FOIL, or the distributive property. So we do r times r is r squared. And then we do r times 5. Maybe I'll just point it from back there. That's 5r. I'll do the other ones in orange. By the way, if you like this kind of stuff, or perhaps you're rusty and you want to get better at it, I have a ton of videos on one of my playlists on this channel for uh, factoring and algebra. So if you really want to brush up your algebra, you can go there. Some of the classmates already had asked me, and they're like, oh, that's pretty cool. You put some videos up there. Uh, and the reason I did that actually was because my niece was having a tough time in math, and she's in grade 10 and lives far away. So I thought, hey, what the heck? Let me help her out and help out some other people that maybe don't have a, an uncle who's a rocket scientist. So yeah, that's about it. Anyway, what we want to do here is simplify. Notice that r squared appears on both sides of the equation. So if you thought this question was quadratic, uh, note we're good, that's gone. Now we can just isolate and collect like terms. So 5r plus 5r is 10r. And then the 169 and the 25 are going to work together on the other side. When we move the 25, it's negative. Okay, I'm running out of room a little bit here. I'm going to just finish the question right in this box here. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to point an arrow way up here like that. So we have 10R is 144. And then R is 14.4. Now the question says to the nearest tenth. So I'll put the zero there and put meters. So that is that. I had to dodge to the right a little bit there, but hopefully uh, hopefully that was pretty good and it made sense to you. So, blank page. So I thought I maybe would have a little bit of fun with you. I'd like you to just uh, solve the following algebraic question. I'm going to make this one up on the fly, so maybe my feedback and my response is a little bit slower on this one. Just draw a right angle triangle, just in your notes somewhere. And you can practice this algebra one more time. So how about, let's make this x plus 7. And this is x. And this is 12. And I'm just going to mention here, all units are in meters. All measurements in meters, okay? So the question is, solve for x. So at this point, I'd like you to pause the video, try that out. If it takes you 10 minutes, it takes you 10 minutes. If it takes you three minutes, it takes you three minutes, no problem. I'm just gonna shrink that up a little bit to save a little bit of real estate. So uh, pause the video and resume when ready. Okay, so if you've uh, resumed the video here, you wanna use the Pythagorean theorem again. The issue here is which is the longest side. The longest side is always opposite the right angle. So that means x plus 7 is going to go by itself. 
and then you have on the other side the x squared and the 12 squared. So we can write down x plus 7, uh, let me just give it some room there, as x plus 7 squared. Instead we'll write x plus 7 times x plus 7. And on the other, high, other side we have x squared and 144. 12 squared is 144. So we want to distribute this. So that's a binomial times a binomial. So that'll be x squared and 7x and 7x and 49. On the other side we have x squared plus 144. The x squareds cancel and 7 and 7 is 14 so that's 14x. On the other side of the coin here we have 144 minus 49 so 14x is 95. I'm just going to put an arrow here and just state the answer. You would divide both sides by 14. So maybe I should just do that in orange here. So you're going to divide both sides by 14 and cross those out. So the answer is 95 divided by 14. I didn't specify to what precision or accuracy so I'm just going to give you three decimal places here and call it a day because I think you've earned a little bit of a break. So yeah, that's the answer to the question. 6.786 meters. You might be wondering these are cool, like these triangles, but like I remember doing something like sine, cos, tan. So where the heck is that? So that's next week. So next week we're going to cover in chapter 5 uh, what sine, cosine, and tangent are. If you did that back in the day, you're going to remember it pretty fast. Uh, but if you haven't done it before or you're really weak at math and you don't remember it too well, don't worry. Next week... I'm going to do a very, very, very easy and slow lesson on sine, cos, and tan. And then the following week, I'm going to be more aggressive and do some application and problem solving. So in summary, next week, easy stuff. And the, the following week after that, tough stuff. And then, of course, in two weeks from now, our final lesson where I'll just throw the book at you and do some really hard trigonometry questions. Thank you for your time. Be well. And I look forward to your assignment submissions. Bye.